Hello, welcome to this substance sampler tutorial. Um, we're going to make a very quick fabric material uh, which we can customize uh, within Substance Painter. So uh, I don't give a lot of love to Substance Sampler. Uh, I know there's a real deep depth in there. Um, <laughs> and the more and more I learn, I suppose, the more and more I'll show you. So this is quite a simple one. First, we're going to create a new material. Uh, I've got the T-shirt here which is uh, like a default model. Let me just turn the shadows off for a second. There we go. Uh, if you haven't got that, you can go down to Viewer Settings and then select the T-shirt from the list. Uh, we've got all sorts of hit, all sorts of things here. We've even got a slightly different T-shirt. There we go. Okay, so I'm just using a T-shirt because we're going to go with fabric. Let me just minimise that. Okay, so in your... Uh, assets here you may find that it's all grouped by type now this mixes them up and gives you a very kind of uh, unsatisfactory view of what all of them do so first thing I do is go group by and then we'll have category and now what we've got is we've got adjustment filters we've got some uh, ceramic materials uh, so all of our materials are kind of grouped together We've got our generators all grouped and we've got our HDR tools, etc. etc. So it just gives you a better idea of the function of all these things. Because uh, if they're all mixed up together, who knows? Uh, I've, I've, I've personally found it confusing. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I want to do for my material is add a base layer. So we do that up here, add base material, and that will come up with a load of options so we've got a base material we've got some presets here and i'm going to select this fabric oh no that's concrete <laughs> this fabric one so this fabric one just gives us some very basic sort of you know starting points for our material uh, we've got our uh, this color our roughness value uh, metallic opacity uh, ao etc etc so that just gives you a, a starting point. Um, and then we're going to want a uh, a weave of some description. Um, but in all reality, what I'm going to use is one of these fabric materials down here. And then we're just going to update it. So I can drag and drop these above my base material. There we go. And it will give me an option. Uh, or give me a preview rather so this one's like a braid material uh that's not really what i want uh we have a denim style once it thinks yeah there we go so that's kind of a denim and then um we have various other ones so we've got a jersey a twill a tweed and a, a spacer and this basic flannel so I'm going to pick up uh, what's this jersey and see what that looks like. There we go. Yeah, that's not really what I want. That's more kind of woolen, I guess. So let's have a look at flannel. There we go. That's something close to what I want. So we've got like a a thread and a uh, a weave going on there, and we've got some uh, different colours going on. And you know we can update and adjust this to our needs. So in the next section, we're just going to go through the options we have on this flannel fabric to see what we can do. So I will talk to you then. Okay, so um, we have our basics here, and it's just set to you know a default. We've got a few presets we can use. So. You could change to one of these presets if it's more uh, suited to your needs. Uh, we've even got a shiny one. There we go. But I'm going to go back to the basic flannel. And then we've got warp color and warp, um, uh, sorry, and weft color. So warp and weft uh, are the different directions of the threads. Why make these very distinctive colors? So let's do that one and oops let's change this one to blue or green there we go i should bring it over 
so we can see which are the warp and which are the weft so i believe the the warp are the vertical and the weft are the horizontal so i don't want any particular uh, color in this i want it to be quite the default so i'm going to have somewhere near a mid gray for both now don't worry that that's not really going to show up anything really exciting for our preview here uh, we are going to make that a slightly darker one i think um we are going to update these so that when you're in substance painter you can do something about it okay so that's our warp and our weft uh, colors we also have warp roughness and warp and metallic and uh weft warp, uh, sorry warpness roughness and metallic so we can turn you know we can have different style threads in here you could have a very rough thread in one direction you can have a very shiny thread in another direction um, and in that way you can you know make some quite interesting materials so these are all set the same at the moment but let's say for argument's sake i want my uh, horizontal to be a bit metallic there we go we should get a bit of shine out of those now if you want to see the maps if we go over here and go to 3d 2d at the bottom we can have a look at what the maps are looking like so this is our metallic map uh, so white or brighter ones are more metallic and black and darker ones are less metallic so if i uh, change this i'll make that really dark or i'll make it really white and we should get an update although it doesn't look like it's actually doing an awful lot oh, that's because i'm on roughness silly man uh there we go so you can balance that to your heart's content to get to where you want to be uh similarly on the roughness we could have a very rough on one and a little less on another again don't worry about it uh we're just setting like a base here uh, which we're going to make fully customizable in uh, Substance Painter. Okay, right. What's next? So uh, what we'll do next is work on the uh, tiling of this material um, in its initial state. It's currently tiled on this model, but its actual size is this size. You know, it's not, um, yeah, it's not tiling there. It's only tiling here. Okay. Uh, right, so next we'll adjust that, so I'll talk to you then. Okay, so now what I want to do, uh, because this is too big a stitch, uh, is reduce it. And what we need for that is a transform. So if we come up to add a layer, and if I type in transform up there, it will give me my options. And what we want is this transform here so by default it's only going to let you um, adjust your hand uh, adjust your handles uh, but if we check uh, change to weight plus parameters it will give us some parameters to uh, play with and i just want to reduce the scale a bit so let's go down to 0 0.5 that's the wrong way <laughs> let's go to two and you'll see we've got a much much finer uh, mesh or weave anyway uh, the problem with that is is as it goes down its resolution uh, within this 2048 map which is kind of my default uh, or the default size is not enough so at this point in time i'm going to change this to a 4096 and now with that extra uh, resolution we get a much tighter map back okay so you can do other things in here too like uh, change your scale we can skew it uh, you can experiment with all sorts of things you can flick it, uh, flip it vertically uh, or horizontally and you can even either uh, <laughs> you could even uh, put safe transform on which is a very worthwhile thing because safe transform will uh, essentially make it uh, much more likely that it will remain tiny so uh, let's try 1.5 there actually oh no that's 15 
1.5 no it's not going to let me it's just going to use whole numbers which is all part of the safe transform uh, options so there we go we have a, uh, a weaved material we can go through our uh, maps here so we've got base color we've got a normal map we've got roughness and metallic uh, we have height although there's not much there uh, AO opacity and our specular level we're not going to use all of these uh, we're just going to use the basics of base color normal roughness metallic I think yes okay so in the next bit uh, what we're going to do or what I'm going to show you how to do is to expose parameters so that when we send it to substance painter we can adjust those in substance painter okay so I'll talk to you then okay so what we're going to do now is expose some parameters and what that means is we're going to um, allow other programs which can use substance materials or substance archives to adjust the material in them so in substance painter and designer and stager um, and anything else that's got a substance integration I, I know modo has but i think blender has all sorts of things do so what we want to do is find our um, parameters or our things that we want to expose and then um, expose them sorry I'm just talking rubbish now uh, so for example I might want to allow a user to change the base color so I'm going on to the base material and under base color I'm going to click this little thumbtack and that will expose the parameter to other programs so if we look up here we've got exposed parameters so we can click here and change it even on the fly within this uh, within this uh, program okay so what else have we got that we might want to expose so the base color we might want to uh, expose our sheen edge um, you may want to expose the roughness and maybe even the metallic on the base color that is so other ones you might want to look at is if we go onto the fabric itself uh, we can expose the uh, yarn colors uh, so warp and weft uh, where's the other one there it is and depending upon what you're trying to achieve you might want to expose the roughness and metallic parameters also now i would caution you as to how many parameters you're going to expose because you're going to end up with a great long list if you expose everything and that makes it a little bit unusable it's going to make it less um how can i put it um yeah just less user friendly because if you're staring through hundreds and hundreds of parameters you know it all becomes a bit lost it does for me at least <laughs> okay so what else might we want to expose well one thing that you might want to look at is the transform so for my scale here um you know this material looks great on this level of model and for this um how can i put it for this size of model and it's uv um, but it might not be the same for others so one good thing to do is to say okay well i'm going to expose my transform parameter so that I can scale it in and out of um, you know other programs okay so that's about that for exposing um, in the next one what we'll do is we'll publish this to uh, substance painter and then see how it works so I'll talk to you then right so we're ready to publish now uh, so first of all over on the right hand side under materials I've got this untitled material which is my material so I'm going to right click that and oops rename it and we'll call this uh, I don't know uh, basic cloth there we go eventually that will decide it's going to do something ah which will if I press enter of course okay so once i've done that uh, over on the right hand side we have this share button and if i click that i'm going to share it with 
3D Painter. Now it's going to calculate our material and add it to our substance library. So if I come into our substance library, uh, I've if you haven't got substance open, it will open it for you. I have got it open because it takes an age to open on my machine. Uh, and now we have our basic cloth. So if I uh, perhaps go to open samples and let's uh, just put a preview sphere in. No, not the preview sphere because it's got horrible glares and things on it. Let's have meat map. So now in my layers, I can drag and drop my base cloth over here and it will calculate and show up. So there we go. It looks identical. Lovely. If we have a look under our properties, we should see all of our exposed parameters. So now I can very easily change the base color to a kind of uh, salmony pinky color there. Uh, I could change our uh, warp and weft to a, a darker salmon there and a lighter on the other direction. Whoops, what have I done? I've opened up the attributes. There we go. Uh, so then we've got our roughness and uh, both of our roughness, both of our metallics and our transform scale. So I can really, really mess with this transform, you know, to update our uh, little material. As you can see, it's brought all of our layers over. We've got our color, metal, roughness, normal and height. We can turn those off and on as we want and yeah now you've got a really great base cloth material to work with it's customizable um you know really easy and it's taken me you know some minutes to um explain it to you but once you get the hang of it of course you know it takes minutes and you can use that same kind of uh, rationale or same kind of process on all of the other uh, materials that um, are within uh, Substance Sampler. So I hope you found that useful. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please mention them below in the comment section. Um, and I hope you have a, a terrific day and I'll talk to you soon.